Simeonians Argies 352 explain. Today we're going to be going through the attacking structure, how they press, and of course their really interesting build up using a concept that Scaloni used with Argentina at the World Cup with defensive midfielders and central midfielders dropping back to become centre-backs. If you are new around here, of course, smash that subscribe button and like the goddamn video. Anyway, let's get this party started. So first up, the first thing we want to talk about in terms of the structure and shape is the overall formation. Inter Milan build up with three players at the back, one defensive midfielder, two central midfielders, two wing backs that play in really high positions at times, and very much two centre forwards. The centre forwards do rotate in terms of when they're playing different opposition, with Lukaku coming in and Joaquim Carrera coming in in certain moments. The four forwards operate slightly differently. Carrera is more of a natural attacking midfielder. Lukaku's kind of that last line poacher. Martinez is a bit of a complete forward and Edin Zeko, the classic target man. Inter Milan have great variation in their play. There's a lot of fluidity in terms of players moving positions. You know, wing backs moving inside, outside midfielders pulling wide, strikers pulling into the channel, channels and all sorts of rotations. But let's start with the defensive side of Inter Milan's game. Inzaghi joined Inter Milan after Antonio Conte. Conte's in Inter were a really defensive, counter-attacking 5-3-2 formation that dropped deep to draw their opponents on before using the counter-attack and the channels to get Lutaro Martinez and Lukaku running and combining at the opposition. The interesting side with Inzaghi's Inter Milan is they started the season actually pressing, playing a little higher up the pitch, looking to squeeze the play. But they have reverted to this kind of deep five at the back structure when defending. But what I really like about them is when they press high up the pitch. When they're squeezing their opponents from their opponent's goal kicks, they basically press in a 3-5-2 structure. Both wing backs super high up the pitch, both midfielders pressurising high, both strikers working super hard and in a defensive sense, forcing the opposition to play long and then returning with quick counter-attacks. So let's take a look at Inter Milan's high press, how they squeeze high. So this is a moment from the Inter Milan 2-0 win against AC in the Champions League semi-final. We can clearly start to see the aggressive side of Inter Milan. Both centre forwards press high at the pitch, either pressing the centre halves or forcing the goalkeeper to go long. Both wing backs are super high. We can see Denzel Dumfries at the bottom of the shot, who's going to be a bit aggressive on Theo Hernandez a little bit later down the line in terms of the, the move we're looking at now. We've got Nico Barella uh, sitting on one of the central midfielders and of course we're going to have Henrik Mkhitaryan jumping on Tonelli in a second. What Inter Milan like to do is they like to force you back when the ball is played backwards. Here we've seen Theo Hernandez play the ball to Tamore and Inter Milan instantly squeeze. One of their triggers is a backward pass and they do it really well. Not only do they squeeze high but there is a moment where they'll stop and assess the play and not commit too high. So we can see Henrik Mkhitaryan pressurising Tonelli. You've got Lataro Martinez taking uh, Simon Kjart and of course Edin Zeko is picking up Tamore. What I like about Inter is they have this kind of like set phases in a sense where the keeper has received the ball now and then they're going to start their second phase of their press. Lataro is going to jump off his centre-back and look to force the goalkeeper Mike Mignon into a long pass but as we can see it the pressure is so high. Out of shot you've got DeMarco who will be looking to pressurise the opposition's right back if the ball works out to that flank. Again we can mention the Henrik Mkhitaryan pressure on Tonelli and of course Hernandez is going to get pressurised by Dumfries if the ball goes out. What I like about this is how they pressurise the ball. Lataro is cutting off the pass the centre back he's forcing the goalkeeper into a long pass in these instances we can really see Inter Milan's shape and structure they're defending with basically four players the two outside centre backs uh, one of them out of shot just down low the centre centre back who's dealing with the aerial duel and the defensive midfielder both central midfielders are super mobile they're really good at pressuring high and then getting low to win the second ball and that's exactly what happens in this move Mike Mignon is forced to play long and then in midfield Barella who's fantastic at recovering the ball in these central areas, picks the ball up. Then links with uh, DeMarco. DeMarco carries wide. Inter commit bodies so well on the counter-attack. Frequently, you'll see four players, five players counter-attack. That's usually both for the wing-backs, one central midfielder, and two of the centre-forwards. The good thing that I like about Inter is that when they're committing bodies into the box, they're forcing the opposition's back line backwards, which opens up the space for DeMarco to find Henrik Mkhitaryan on edge of the box, dribbles through, and finds the second 
goal, which pretty much kills the game. Really good run off the ball as well from Henrik Mkhitaryan. I think it's one of the big strengths of Inter Milan's central midfielders, Barella Mkhitaryan. And if uh, Karl Loglu is playing higher, usually he plays as a regista or Brozovic is the regista. Off the ball movement, really, really good for Inter Milan. But absolutely fantastic pressurising the opponent from the goalkeeper, winning the ball back in central midfield, counter-attacking, and then scoring from a run from midfield. So from a defensive sense, Inter Milan like to press you out of the back, force you into those long balls, and then use their three centre-backs plus the defensive midfielder to win the initial contact, and then both the central midfielders come back, as well as the wing-backs, to win that second ball. Inter Milan are brilliant in the defensive phase of the game. Their high block, their low block, and their mid block is fantastic. In terms of their mid block, they drop into kind of a uh, you know three-five-two structure again, and they put pressure on the ball with their two strikers plus one midfielder will jump out of position and squeeze high. The other two will filter over, giving Inter great protection. Moving on to the possession game, because this is where I think Inzaghi has kind of upgraded into Milan. You'd say under Conte, it was a little bit structured, a little bit rigid in terms of how they played. That's not saying they were a bad football team out of the back, but I think the evolution under Simeone and Inzaghi is really clear to see. One of the things I really like about how Inter play is the use of their midfielders in the back line. In terms of their attack, in structure what you usually see is the two strikers holding the you know the depth of the attack you'll see um, one of the midfielders uh, usually Henrik Mkhitaryan staying high one of the wing backs will play low one of the wing backs will play high it's kind of this asymmetrical flavor that not only pins the opposition back but it gives you really good ball playing options there's a lot of passes on the diagonal there's a lot of ability to beat a press which I think is one of Inter's biggest strengths so in terms of the structure what we see with Inter Milan at times is their center halves play super wide. Bastoni is one of the best young centre-backs in Europe for me. I think he's probably the best young wide centre-back in the competition. We'll talk about his creative and his attacking side in a minute, but the way he plays in possession is very, very good. So what we see him to do at times with their wide centre-backs is they play super wide. Damian's come into the team at the back end of the season, and he's a kind of obviously hybrid fullback, wing-back, centre-half, so he's really good at the role. But what this gives um, not only into Milan, but their, their players a lot of options. What we'll see is the Regista dropping into a the centre-back position to pick up the ball, but also the other midfielder, Barella usually night drops nice and deep. What this creates almost is a, is a false back four, which means the opposition have got to press high if they want to squeeze the play, which means they're going to draw more players on, and then the pass will be exposed. Inter Milan scored a brilliant goal against Jose Mourinho's Roma using this concept. So we pick the play up with Andrian Nana in possession. We can't see uh, Bastoni's just out of shot, top of shot. We've got Damian as the right centre-back. Barella's dropped in. And of course, Brozovic is operating as the regista in this move. What I like about Inter is that they can play Karl Loglu. They can play Brozovic. Both players are supremely good on the ball. Both can do the job as regista. But the style stays the same. Reminiscent of Pep Guardiola's Manchester City. You move players out of City and they can still play the football. That is very similar to Inter Milan. So what I love about this is it really destroys the Roma press. Roma in this game, I think they're playing a back three. They're pressing with two forwards plus an attacking midfielder. The issues that you have when you're building deep with a four, as we see Brighton do, is it means you've got to commit a load of bodies or you're going to get played through with the overload. What we see here, natural overload. Of course, Pellegrini's trying to pick up Barella. Acherby's getting picked up by the centre forward, which opens up a great lane into the feet of Brozovic. Brozovic with a really good turn. And then he can now play with two of the players taken out of the game facing forward. This allows him to drive forward into the centre circle and find a fantastic pass in behind the opposition defence. Splitting the outside centre back and wing back with a great through ball with Dumfries in behind the defence and then you see the commitment of Inter Milan to get bodies into the box. You'll basically see a minimum of three players attacking the box. Usually the two centre forwards and a central midfielder or the two centre forwards and the wing back as well. We'll see combinations with the wing back, central midfielder and the two strikers as Inter commit four bodies into the penalty area to create really good crossing situations. But getting to this part of the, the pitch all comes from the ability of, of Brozovic or the Regista to turn, the commitment of Roma to squeeze high, but also hitting them in behind. And then you've got three bodies racing into the box as DeMarco slides home to give into the lead. I love this goal. I think it's fantastic. And it's a use of that Inter Milan build-up play, creating a back four out of possession with central midfielders dropping and the two outside centre 
centre-backs pushing high. This use of midfielders in the defensive line plus the wide centre-backs causes the opponent so many issues in their pressing. As we mentioned, if they squeeze high, ultimately Inter Milan could commit a 5-on-4 on your back line if you're defending with 4 or a 5-on-5 five five if you're defending with 5. They draw you on, they drop those midfielders in and it creates such a good base for them to play through the lines, instantly get into a, an attacking situation. And that's one of the big things about Inzaghi. There's a lot of rotation, there's a lot of total football building out from the back with short and snappy passes. But Inter can flip the switch. They can play direct into the feet of one of the centre forwards or, of course, as well, into the wing backs in behind, as we saw there. And it's a really good way of them progressing the play. In the Champions League game, Milan failed to stop the balls into the two centre forwards, Edin Zeko and Latara Martinez, and lost the game. That's where Inter was super dominant. The balls into the feet of the forwards, instantly turning, instantly getting attacking. Talking about attacking, let's move on to the final third because Inter Milan are very, very interesting in that aspect as well. Well, you know, not only do they have two strikers that are capable of linking, playing little one-twos and then getting in behind the defences, they've got wing-backs that get into the final third and cross from both sides, but also there's some really interesting rotation. I want to take a look at the left-hand side now. We're going to move through to the final third as Inter have built their attack and they've committed bodies uh, forward. What I like about this left-hand side of the pitch is it's really fluid and flexible. Not only do you have the centre-forward that will pull wide and get into the channel and look for balls into feet to get shots away you'll see underlaps from the central midfielder and the wing back but also you'll see the wing back spinning in behind so let's take a look at chance creation especially on that left hand side because Inter Milan have got more assists from defense than any other team in the Champions League this season not only that DeMarco is the first player since Samueletto in the 2009-10 season under Jose Mourinho to get five plus assists in the Champions League this season of course Pistoni is the highest assisting centre-back as well with three assists so far. But what that gives is Inter Milan so much flexibility, so let's focus on that. So let's go through a number of those combinations in the Champions League and in Serie A. Here we pick up the move with DeMarco with the ball in his feet wide against Benfica. What we're going to see in this moment is a really good run and interplay from Henrik Mkhitaryan making the underlap. But I also want you to focus on the commitment of getting bodies into the box. One of the things we mentioned before, two strikes into the box plus either a central midfielder or wing back or alternatively a wing back center midfielder and the two center forwards four players in the box very very difficult to play against so let's take a look at this interplay of course Inter Milan have worked the ball from Bastoni out wide to DeMarco Mkhitaryan makes that unlap why it's so difficult to, to defend against in a back four is not only are you pulling out the uh, the midfielder the wide midfielder but you're also pulling out the fullback as well which creates great opportunity for for underlaps and combination play. So as Mkhitaryan moves wide, DeMarco gets his head, head up and slides him down the line. From this position, you can see the commitment. Both strikers in the penalty area and from the back post, we've got a 2v1 overload. As the ball's worked out to the, the wide area, really good sort of hold-up play from Mkhitaryan. DeMarco bursts in the underlap, which is a real good asset uh, to have as a left wing back, you know, understanding that not only are you going to overlap, but you can underlap as well to really unlock the door. And Mkhitaryan turns, really good little pass into the feet of DeMarco and now we have a big big problem DeMarco is on the wrong side of the midfielder low ball into the box and of course Latara Martinez is there to tap the ball home but in terms of commitment to players into the penalty areas mentioned before wing back central midfielder two strikers a key theme of Inzaghi's side either to get four or three bodies into the box whenever the ball is worked wide so let's move forward to another situation this is kind of now uh, creating from balls into the feet of the center forwards but but I also want you to focus on the play of uh, Bastoni on the overlap. You know, this is something that we saw with Chris Wilder, Sheffield United, overlapping centre-backs. This is a key theme of Inter Milan. They can go overlapping, but they can also underlap. This is a bit of a, um, a clip of the overlap to highlight the play that you're going to basically, again, commit the midfielder, which opens up that pass into the feet of Joaquim Correa. Correa with a great turn and shooting. But that doesn't happen if Bastoni doesn't commit the midfielder on the overlap. The fluidity of Inter Milan, the to play the, the change of positions is absolutely fantastic where Bastoni's becoming the nominal wide player from a centre-back position. Moving over to Bastoni
Tony again, why I think he's one of the best wide centre-backs in the world. Not only can he overlap, underlap, but he's got the ability to carry out of defence, get into the final third and deliver from that inside left position. This ball was absolutely fantastic. I don't even need to explain this. You can see it. It's obvious. Three players again into the box. A brilliant deep ball and Nico Barella heading across the goalkeeper to make it 1-0 to Inter Milan. Moving to the last little bit about the wide centre-backs, the underlap. A little bit of a driving play again out of the back. Pistoni loves to bring the ball out of defence, which I think gives Inter Milan such a different dynamic to their kind of back three. You know, you've got to commit bodies to stopping them carrying the ball out or have situations where you'll get deep crosses or alternatively, you'll have simple underlaps or one-twos, you know, working it wide to DeMarco, making a forward run, receiving the ball back and then crossing to the back post to Henrik Mkhitaryan. Again, three bodies in the box, two strikers and one central midfielder. Inter Milan, so fluid, so flexible on that left-hand side of the pitch. It is a joy to watch their creativity. And finally, a simple ball over the defence. You know, another weapon for Inter Milan. Wing-backs running in behind. We see it on the right-hand side with Dumfries and the left-hand side with DeMarco. Uh, I think the quality Inter Milan have in central midfield opens this up. You know, be it Barella, Brozovic, Karloglu, Mkhitaryan, all fantastic long-range passes. This ball is absolutely spot on. It's a simple goal for Inter Milan to score. Ball over the top, DeMarco in behind. Ball across to Edin Dzeko. Uh, really, really good goal. But those threats that we spoke about absolutely devastating for Simeone and Zaghi's Inter Milan in a 3-5-2. So we spoke about creativity, we spoke about the interplay, we've done a little bit of analysis. Let's now look at the statistics for this great Inter Milan team in the 3-5-2. We're on a fantastic run of form at the moment. You'd say their standout performance this season was their 2-0 win against AC Milan. In terms of players that were absolutely brilliant in that match, you're looking at Henrik Mkhitaryan playing very much a box-to-box a -box attacking midfield role, uh, scored completed 95% of his passes against AC Milan, but really surprisingly, won four out of his six tackles. In fact, Henrik Mkhitaryan has made more tackles plus interceptions in the Champions League than any other player this season. You know, a creative wide player previously, now very much box-to-box -box hard-working midfielder. I think as well, Letaro Martinez has been a star up front in terms of his uh, goals in Serie A this season. 21 goals in 38 games and six assists. And I think one of the big things that we've seen with Inter over the last few games is the re-emergence of the Lukaku Lataro Martinez front two. We saw that to devastating effect against Atalanta. And I think we've spoken about a lot of interplay and a lot of combination play on that left-hand side. But those two centre forwards, when they are hot, are one of the most devastating two-man strike forces in the world of football. Against Atalanta, Lataro scored and got an assist, with Lukaku scoring a uh, goal just from a brilliant build-up over the top link-up play with Lataro. This 3-5-2 is, is so good to watch. I think it's one of the best I've seen. And the fluidity that you get from the combination play of that midfield three, the forward motion of uh, both of the wing-backs. We can see DeMarco as high as Lataro Martinez getting in the final third. I really would describe this formation and system as a 3-5-2, not a 5-3-2 that we saw under Antonio Conte. DeMarco, one of the standout players this season, top assister in the Champions League for Inter Milan this season. His delivery and his growth has been fantastic. Had five shots and created one chance against Atalanta, a top, top player that's just continually evolving. But Inter Milan have got so many different assets in there. Carl Noglu, a set-piece specialist as well as a really good playmaker. Barella's energy, a Cherby, Bastoni, Andre Nana in goal, who's had the most clean sheets of any goalkeeper in the Champions League ever with seven they're just a great footballing team. But guys, that is Inter Milan, a complete side under Inzaghi. Brilliant off the ball, brilliant in possession and fantastic attacking in really creative ways using wing-backs and centre-backs, underlapping, overlapping as well. Guys, make sure you get into the comments below what have you thought of Inter Milan this season. Do you like them? Do you think Simeone Inzaghi is the best Italian tactician at the moment? I'm in Statman Dave. Subscribe if you're new and we'll see you soon.